In the Season 6 1.28 update, they added the Jack-12 as a mid-season update weapon, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to make the best class setup possible for this, because I think a lot of people are going to think, hey, you know what, let me use something gimmicky, because it does have tons of attachments that could be seen as very gimmicky we're going to talk about when you should use one over the other when it comes to slug rounds dragon's breath these grenade rounds that blow up on impact so we're going to talk about which ammunition you should be using as well as these other attachments that we have on the screen if you do enjoy the video learn something new please do me a favor hit that like button if you're brand new want to find your way back for more call of duty content make sure you are subscribed with notifications on Let's go ahead and get into it. So one one thing that's really interesting about this one is it's basically a fully automatic Origin 12 shotgun with a faster fire rate. So it's basically as good as the Origin in my opinion and even slightly better because it's automatic and you're able to have a little bit bigger drum mag without the issues of spamming or anything like that. You just hold the trigger and it fires at a fire rate of around 336 rounds per minute, especially when you come to Warzone where it has that same two shot kill potential as the Origin. So we're gonna kind of take a look at what the best class setup is. And I wanna spend a little bit of time focusing on these specific attachments and to kind of talk a little bit about why some aren't practical. When it comes to slug rounds, Maybe a multiplayer, cool, you're going to get 130 damage even if you land a headshot. But when it comes to Warzone, it's just not practical. You might as well just be spamming and you're going to get those kills. And you get a little bit of a spread involved. You could hit fire or whatever. You'd have to ADS with slug rounds. They're not practical with this gun because you cannot get a one-shot headshot kill the same way you can with the 725. For whatever reason, that's how they balanced it. When it comes to the Dragon's Breath rounds... These aren't something I'd recommend in Warzone, primarily because the damage profile doesn't really change the number of shots to kill. Meaning that when it's five shots to kill, it's still going to be five shots to kill. When it's four shots, it's still going to be four, three, two, and one. So it's not as practical. Even though they do more damage, they have a little bit of burn damage uh, that could be offset a little bit by EOD. The big change that we're going to notice with those is in multiplayer. You're going to extend that one shot kill potential. Because you only need to deal 100 damage in multiplayer. And if it's dealing 130 at significant ranges, you're going to be able to get a lot more one-shot kills. So the Dragon's Breath, that one's going to be more gimmicky a little bit in Warzone if you just want to mess around. But it's not as practical, especially if you're playing trios or quads. You just need more ammo to down players. Because in some cases, it's going to be four and five shots to kill where you're not gonna really have enough ammo to down two people. So in my opinion, the biggest issue with these frag rounds is there's actually a little bit of splash damage. So if the person's too close and you're spamming these, you're still gonna kill very fast. But the issue is that you're gonna run into is that you're gonna start damaging yourself, which is not a good thing. I know I saw some clips on Twitter where people are shooting at helicopters, vehicles, stuff like that. And initially I thought these would be great for Warzone because you can use them against vehicles and it evades trophies. You can see it in the descriptions, small ballistic profile that evades the trophy system, low yield payload capable of dismemberment. So it has a little bit of cool mechanic to it, but overall it just takes too many shots. If you're gonna shoot a helicopter, it's gonna take eight shots for a helicopter unless it's already damaged. For a Bertha, it's 12 shots, so that's not really practical. For the cars and the quads, those are three, and that's where it can be definitely pretty deadly, especially if someone's cruising around. You could roll up on them, have your squad lined up, maybe two of them, and they start spamming these at another vehicle. So it could be used as kind of a trolley class. So it does have a little bit of practicality to it, but overall, if somebody's pushing you, you're gonna have a little bit of splash damage. You can actually hurt yourself, down yourself, which in my opinion, isn't a really good type of weapon. Now, let's go ahead and get into these other various attachments. The main ones we wanna focus on here are obviously gonna be the choke, the marauder, the monolithic suppressor. The Marauder has a built-in suppressor with the extra damage range as well as tighter bullet spread. We're going to look at the spreads of all these weapons so you can kind of compare them for yourself and see what makes sense. The barrels, I'm going to go through all these different barrels um, and we can kind of decide which one works better because these ones basically say they're the same. The difference is this one actually is going to reduce your movement speed. So the torrent's going to make you a little bit slower. Um, and then we have the, the lasers. The only one we're going to really talk about today is the 5 milliwatt because this one's sprint to fire speed, and the TAC laser is going to be ADS speed. But you'll see 
with this particular build, you're not going to need to aim down sight. So these are the pellet spreads for the base weapon as well as the individual attachments. The one on the left is just me standing still with the hip fire. The one on the right is me fully aimed down sight. And obviously when you aim down sight with shotguns, in this game it will tighten the spread significantly for a vast majority of the cases. We're gonna see where that kind of gets debunked a little bit. So we have the base one here on the left. You can see kind of how the spread is. It does tighten up with the choke significantly. The Marauder, it actually makes the pellet spread worse. So I don't know if that's a bug detachment, um, but the ADS ends up looking like the choke. So maybe it only tightens the spread when you're ADS versus the other one, it, it actually expands it when you're in the hip fire, which just doesn't make sense to me. You could see those clearly the choke is getting significantly tighter uh, spread there. Uh, the influx, which is that first barrel, you can see it's tightening it up about the same as a choke, not quite as tight. Um, maybe the first spread, the base is a little bit, but I don't know, it's kind of hard to judge. It's just a little bit better than the base. Then we got the Urban King, which is supposed to help you with ADS speed or whatever and movement speed because it's one of those short barrels. But you can see it's kind of giving you a really wonky spread here. It's spread out considerably far. Then we got the Torrent, which is going to be slowing down your movement compared to the Influx. Um, you can see that the Torrent is very tight when you aim down sight. And then it still has a decent spread when you're in the hip fire. And here's where like the best, in my opinion, attachment when it comes to this. Because the 5 milliwatt laser, obviously a green laser is going to be visible. But it's going to help your sprint to fire speed which is important when you're trying to spam that trigger or hold the trigger because obviously it's automatic. When you're in the hip fire, it'll, it'll be able to fire it right away without a long delay as many other weapons have. And sometimes just that difference in getting that first shot off is the difference between winning the gunfight because you've already impacted them a couple times before they've been even been able to fire their weapon or aim down sight. So five milliwatt, you can see it ends up being the same regardless if you're aimed down sight or in the hip fire, which is amazing. Then once we take the best class setup that I'm gonna go ahead and show off for you guys, we could either use it with the choke, which you can see this is a disgusting ADS spread and the hip fire ends up being just a little bit tighter than the five milliwatt. And then the best Marauder, these ones end up being tied, but the ADS just isn't as tight. Um, and the difference between the choke and the Marauder, like I said, it's a little bit of range. Um, and a little bit of ADS speed. This one's going to be faster. The choke's going to be faster. It's not as heavy, um, but it's also not going to have nearly as much range. So I feel like the best class setup is going to be the 20 round mags because you're still going to get a little bit slower movement, but not quite as low as the 32. And eight is just not enough. You might as well be using the fire dragon's breath. That won't be a significant difference when it comes to war zone. As far as the laser goes, we got to go with that five milliwatt. It's going to give us that sprint to fire. The one milliwatt has, but it's also tightening that hip fire that we saw in, in those screenshots tack laser would be great if you're going to worry about ads really is a trade-off but it's really hard to pass off that sprint to fire speed as well as that tight hip fire spread so we'll go with that one then we got the barrel if you just want the tightest possible i would go with the torrent um this one has a little bit better movement speed but as we saw the the pellets aren't all that tight so you can go with the influx um if you want a little bit more mobility uh, but if you want the just the tightest possible the torrent's great, especially if you're not moving, you can just spam and you're good to go. And then here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to go with the stippled grip because that's another attachment that's going to help me with sprint to fire speed. Aim down side speed, not really as important, but the sprint to fire so we can get those shots off that much quicker. And then the last one, this is where it really comes down to a matter of preference. I think a lot of people got used to running the choke on their origins. That is a great option, but the choke, but the choke didn't have to compete with the Marauder when it came to the origin. This is only on the 680 shotgun, I believe. So this one, it really ends up being the trade-off. You're going to be a little bit slower. You're going to get a little bit more range, but it's not going to be as tight of a bullet spread as the choke, but we saw it's still fairly tight. So I would personally go with the Marauder so you can spam that. They won't see you on the mini map, but if you feel like you've been used to without having a suppressor, the choke is probably the better bet in terms of getting more shots on the target because it'll be a tighter spread. But obviously it's less forgiving because if you miss, you, you completely whiff the shot. Versus if the spread's wide, you can do a little bit less damage because not as many pellets are hitting, but some pellets are hitting. So it's kind of one of those trade-offs. 
Um, I guess I would flip-flop between these and probably go with the choke on sometimes and then go with the marauder But at the end of the day neither one of these is a bad option as long as you got these other Attachments going for it either the torrent or the influx um, So hopefully you guys have found the video helpful in some way if you did Please do me a favor hit that like button if you're brand new looking to find your way back for more call of duty content Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching as always have a great day